ओम नमो नारायण इट्स वंस अगेन माय प्लेजर टू एड्रेस यू ऑन द टॉपिक्स ऑफ हिंदुइज्म सनातन धर्म एंड इट्स एथिक्स यू नो ऑन द बेसिक इंट्रोडक्टरी पार्ट वी हैव बीन डिस्कसिंग अबाउट द इवोल्यूशन अबाउट द डेथ अबाउट द बिगिनिंग अबाउट द एंड अबाउट द संस्कार अबाउट द डिफरेंट एस्पेक्ट्स ऑफ हिंदुइज्म बट वी नीड टू अंडरस्टैंड dharma is a sort of the top most moral values including scripture that is into sanatan dharma hinduism and religions all of them from the world they have got their own importance but the main preachings all are included into the scriptures of sanatan hindu dharma so whenever i talk i talk like a learned person though i am nothing my own master he made me come into the aspect of religious field and then onwards i was amazingly changed so in hinduism in sanatan dharma the value the position of master is above all in a sanskrit verse it is said agyanati mirandasya gyananjan shalaya kaya chakshurun militam yen tasmay shri guruve namaha to a vedanti all his actions are nothing but the expressions of the glory of the guru who is none other than the supreme self how else could i have started my this lecture and above all completed my sanyasa or undergoing the path of sanyasa i neither had the experience nor the scholarship even to conceive such a superhuman task all that i had with me was the blessings of my पूज्य गुरुदेव स्वामी सोमनाथ गिरी महाराज वो इज महामंडेश्वरा ऑफ श्री पंचद इस्लाम जुना खाला एंड वोल ऑफ द वर्ल्ड नो हिम वाया हिज वर्ल्ड पीस कैंपेन एंड हिज नेम महायोगी पायलट बाबा वेल आई ऑफर्ड माई सेल्फ टू वर्क इन द फील्ड फॉर वॉट मे बी कॉल्ड द एप्लाइड सनातन धर्मा आई हैड अ लॉट ऑफ थिंग्स टू बी अंडर गोइंग सो the unbroken flow of grace from the guru i would have not have had the vision of ability or even the consistency of purpose which somehow stood with me all through the four long years and much more than that which it took to compile my topics those always hammered my mind that what should be the answers and i got my answers via him and my prostrations to pujya gurudev mahayogi who tuned me on to the lord's grace and made me aware of the play of his music through the body mind and intellect through each one he sings a different note and yet conducts everyone to produce the harmonious melody called life so my life master my spiritual master as well as the guide for each and every action of my life i bow before him and today i would like to talk to you about the different sorts of feelings i got into the hinduism as well as the virtues of hinduism how they are included for the betterment of humanity whatever my master has taught it is so recognized that illusory nature of our separate from existence sanyasa sanyasa is initially a destructive negative process it is becoming a nobody from everybody no mind from mindfulness and nothing from something or everything or it is dropping becoming and simply being something painful or odious often overwhelming beautiful and absurdly light hearted it is always tremendously vital the most wildly extravagant and extraordinary adventure one could ever imagine remember everything in this world has its own place and has its own dignity and by your judgment you can you are destroying the dignity of someone you are intervening into somebody's territory and darshan is a test of state of nothingness darshan means a sort of self realization you get the feeling of god and 
for me, my guru, is simply a facade of something to vast, to be hushed in a personality at first, though one is forgivable, puzzled by what appears to be an extraordinarily brilliant and versatile personality, a chameleon-like ability to respond to respond an assortment of people of all ages. And this darshan is paradoxically both emptying and filling. Undoubtedly, sannyasis are being who are without self for one thoroughly such a presence or non-presence could there be the extraordinary transformation of so many individuals to which these words bear witness. And as my master invites, I too invite all of you to join on the way to dance, to eat, to hear a few minutes with us in the celebration that life is. There is nothing but nothingness to gain. So, you will get enlightened. Enlightenment is the ultimate objective of our life. Whenever I talk to the religious community, I tell them, you can become Christian, Hindus, Muslims, like a Christian ship. They won't be able to be becoming a lion. That doesn't mean you have to be hostile. That doesn't mean you have to ignore the religion. I mean to say religion may be reconnecting with God, whereas uh, what we talk about uh, dharma, that is the way of religion, the way all the religions think. So choose a path which leads you more and more deeply into aloneness. When you are not alone, you won't be able to meet God. Have you ever heard that God gave darshan? God, God came in uh, front of public. Never. Choose a path which is not traditional, which is not orthodox. Choose a path which is basically revolutionary. Each step is revolt against all that is past and old. The rotten crop is driving the whole world mad. The same has been preached through HWPL as well as the place where we are getting a new shape. One of them is Shinchonji and we are just talking about the new John. So he is a revolutionary because he has not accepted the rotten form of traditional religion. He is giving a new light. Remember, those only individuals have ever become enlightened. Others have become a part of crowd. As a Hindu, as a Christian, as a Muslim, crowds never become enlightened. Only individuals, those people who have guts and courage to be alone, are capable of stopping the movement of the mind and can, set, and can settle into their inner innocence. The deeper you go within yourself, the purer the sources of consciousness that you will find. So, when you reach the very center of your being, you have reached to the center of the universe, then blossoms wisdom, you become a sage. You are on a path of becoming a sage here while you are attending the Hindu or Christian or any of the religious experience program by SWPL and IRPA. This is rebirth or resurrection. You die to the world wanted you to be and you find exactly that existence that is God has been longing for you to be. Existence gives you all that you are asking and longing for. So, my pleasure to address you the different aspects of spirituality via Hindu experience program. Dear brothers and sisters, whenever we talk about Hinduism, whenever we think about what Hindu is, we find very difficult to define it because as I have been telling that Hinduism or Sanatan Dharma is not any religion. And it never accepts just a single messenger. It's true because what Hinduism feels is that God has sent many messengers to the different parts of the globe to guide the humanity. And we just not worship the single, but we worship the single. That means we find that there are different projections of the same God and the divinity has been scattered all over the world, all over the universe into different forms, different places, different nature. So we all worship 
then so there might be different opinions into hinduism but that is leading towards a singularity of god so so we are not just philosophers we do not get satisfied by a single stream of knowledge we want to look the things all over all from the all places from the all the windows or breaking up of the roof and seeing the vast sky not just a part of sky and broadly we can redefine it as a lifestyle also hinduism and hinduism or the hindu lifestyle has got the life philosophy and we need to understand the different aspects of the life as per as hindu philosophy the first point what we believe is that god is present it's a para conscious and it is existing and that is prevailing into every living or non living it is commanding each and every particle of this universe the beginning of the universe already has been mentioned into the different scriptures and into that we find that from a singular it was projected into a vast place of divinity that's why it has been written into the scripture eko aham bahusyama that means it became multiples from the single so that god created each and every life and this god got into the life of every creature from the molecule to the vastness of the big dinosaur any existence from the micro to the macro so all these are forms of god only they all have got the divinity into them it is also been mentioned janma vriddhi kshayar nityam sanchar eti chakravata that is into manusmati 12 oblique 124 that means this is the god only that is the cause of increase in the life and decrease in the life so life and death are been governed by god only and this cycle he has been moving upon since the vast anadi that means there is no past no measurement of the past to the anadi bhavishya to the future so it is like sanatan which never begins which never ends it is ever prevailing into gita the ancient most text of hinduism krishna talks to the arjun he says ishwarah sarva bhutanam riddeshe arjun tishthati brahmayan sarva bhutani yantra runani mayaya so this way he wants to express that oh arjun you just remember that your body is like an instrument and the god is making its vibration into it it has created its own illusion illusions and due to or based upon the karmas or the deeds you do it makes you travel and it resides into the heart of every living being only human if you say it's not so but as far as the animals creatures birds or any of the living thing is concerned it resides into that so this is the first assumption of hinduism the second one is the immortality of soul so our life is just isn't this body it isn't about your mind it isn't about your intellect it has got soul into it this body may decay this body may die but there is immortality of the soul when this body is ended this soul gathers a new soul that we have already discussed into the rebirth and this life goes on continuously and the same thing into gita lord krishna says nainam chindati shastrani nainam dahati pavakah na chainam kledyantyapo na shoshati marutah so none of the uh, arm can cut this soul no fire can burn this soul none of the water can drown this soul or wet this soul and none of the air wind could dry it up so one more thing has been written into gita pasansi jirnani yatha vihai 
नवाने गुणयति नरो पुराणी तथा शरीराणी विहाय जीर्णान अन्यानी संयाति नवानी देहि दैट मीन्स इज वी जस्ट टेक ऑफ अवर क्लोथ्स एंड वी वी आर न्यू क्लोथ्स द सेम वे अवर बॉडी इज लाइक अ क्लोथ द सोल लिवज इट एंड टेक्स अप अ न्यू बॉडी इन टू द नेक्स्ट बर्थ सो दिस सोल इज ऑल्सो अ पार्ट ऑफ लॉर्ड ओनली एंड द डिफरेंस बिटवीन सोल एंड गॉड इज जस्ट इग्नोरेंस टेक इट एज अ वन एंड योर सोल विल गेट प्यूरिफाइड एंड इट विल बी सेम एज डिवाइन डेट्स वाई सनातन धर्म सेज टू क्रिएट डिविनिटी ऑन दिस अर्थ ओनली रादर देन वेटिंग फॉर द हेवन टू बिस्टो अपॉन इट विल बी एज फर एज योर डिट्स द थर्ड एजम्पन और द थर्ड प्रिंसिपल ऑफ हिंदुइजम वॉट वी एक्सेप्ट इज दैट अबाउट द रिजल्ट ऑफ योर डिट्स एंड रीबर्थ दैट वी हैव ऑलरेडी डिस्कस सो इट हैज बिन रिटर्न अवश्य में वक्तव्य कृतम कर्म शुभाशुभम सो योर डीट्स अलोन आर द कॉज ऑफ योर रीबर्थ इन केस यू डू ऑल द गुड डीट्स देन देर इज पॉसिबिलिटी टू गेट फ्री फ्रॉम द साइकल ऑफ बर्थ एंड डेथ दैट इज मोक्षा सो विदाउट सफरिंग और विदाउट एक्सपीरियंसिंग द डीट्स एंड द रिजल्ट यू के नॉट eradicate your karmas you cannot clean off your deeds or the results na buktam kshiyate karma kalpa koti shate rapi that means good or bad deeds result into good or bad life forms that we have discussed and when a human being says that only pleasures are there that is illusion there are agonies also there are pains also so this deed and the rebirth principle is so strong that every birth we have to carry forward and experience the same so fourth one is that the moksha moksha as we have discussed that into every life form there is the residence of god only and it is one of the projection of the vast god the omnipresent god only but this soul is into the bondage of your body and it is also into the grip of your ignorance it is not free so there has been a difference or a gap created between you and god that's what we have learned into the bp also to reconnect with the god so then only you will get the topmost bliss that is moksha and when you attend the moksha you get dissolved into or get become one with the ultimate god and you get free from the cycle of life that is birth or death so it's the ultimate bliss that has been mentioned into hinduism about and the so many parts have been explaining so many scriptures have been explaining about the same so that's why we advocate or we preach we send say that if you are nar you have to become narayana we will teach you if you are just human you will have to become godly you will have to become divine so this nar to narayana journey is said to be into dissolving same as brahma same as shiva or same as narayana the different names of the same god so that's why when i took sanyasi sanyas i become sanyasi i have to say i am brahma sim that means i will feel that i am the creator i will always create and help into the creator of creation of the brahma the same way i say shivo aham that means shiv is like me when i am like shiv that means we are one and this oneness with the god has been preached into the oneness of all the souls into everyone from the different nations different land different countries when we say we are one so nice interpretation that has been derived from the ancient most sanatan dharma philosophy and the main elements or you can say the main signs those constitute the hindu lifestyle let us talk upon that in hinduism we say treat that your soul and the soul into the any of the living creature is one so have very merciful behavior very passionate behavior full of love and compassion 
सो इट हेज बीन रिटर्न इन टू द टैक्स मैया तत्मीदम सर्व जगद व्यक्त मूर्ति ना सो दैट हैज नॉट बीन एक्सप्रेस दैट्स मी दैट इज गॉड एंड आई हैव एक्सप्रेस इन टू द डिफरेंट फॉर्म्स ऑफ दिस यूनिवर्स इट सेल्फ सो बिटवीन मी एंड द माइक्रो पार्टिकल देर इज नो डिफरेंस दे आर द सेम सो ऑलवेज कंसिडर दैट द पर्सन यू मीट इज सेम एज यू He has got the same soul as it you. That's why we say pranam. That's why we say Om Namo Narayan. That means the Narayan, the God into you, I blow upon from the God into me. So this way, our scripture says, "Evam tu pandite jyartva sarva bhoot mayam harin." So only the intelligent people, only the wise people, accepts it that God is prevailing into all of us. so we have to worship each other we have to love each other we have to treat each other as one only the third assumption or the third principle of hinduism what we accept is that about the results of your deeds and rebirth that we have already discussed so it has been written avashyam eva vaktavyam kutam karma shubhashubham so your deeds alone are the cause of your rebirth in case you do all the good deeds then there is possibility to get free from the cycle of birth and death that is moksha so without suffering or without experiencing the deeds and the results you cannot eradicate your karmas you cannot clean off your deeds or the results ना भुक्त क्षीयते कर्मकोटि शतेरपी दैट मीन्स गुड और बैड डीड्स रिजल्ट इन टू गुड और बैड लाइफ फॉर्म्स दैट वी हैव डिस्कस एंड वेन अ ह्यूमन बींग सीज दैट ओनली प्लेजर्स आर देर दैट इज इल्यूजन देर आर एगोनीज ऑल्सो देर आर पेन्स ऑल्सो सो दिस डीड एंड द रीबर्थ प्रिंसिपल इज सो स्ट्रॉन्ग दैट every birth we have to carry forward and express the same so fourth one is that the moksha moksha as we have discussed that into every life form there is the residence of god only and it is one of the projection of the vast god the omnipresent god only but this soul is into the bondage of your body and it is also into the grip of your ignorance it is not free so there has been a difference or a gap created between you and god that's what we have learnt into the bp also to reconnect with the god so then only you will get the topmost bliss that is moksha and when you attend the moksha you get dissolved into or get become one with the ultimate god and you get free from the cycle of life that is birth or death so it's the ultimate bliss that has been mentioned into hinduism about and the so many parts have been explaining so many scriptures have been explaining about the same so that's why we advocate or we preach we saints say that if you are nar you have to become narayana we will teach you if you are just human you will have to become godly you will have to become divine so this nar to narayana journey is set to be into dissolving same as brahma same as shiva or same as narayana the different names of the same god so that's why when i took sanyasi sanyas i became sanyasi i to say i am brahma asmi that means i will feel that i am the creator i will always create and help into the creator of creation of the brahma the same way i say shivo aham that means shiv is like me when i am like shiv that means we are one and this oneness with the god has been preached into the oneness of all the souls into everyone from the different nations different land different countries when we say we are one so nice interpretation that has been derived from the ancient most sanatan dharma philosophy and the main elements or you can say the main science 
those constitute the Hindu lifestyle. Let us talk upon that. In Hinduism, we say, treat that your soul and the soul into the any of the living creature is one. So have very merciful behavior, very passionate behavior, full of love and compassion. So it has been written into the text. Maya tatmidam sarva jagad vyakta murtina. So that has not been expressed. That's me. That is God. And I have expressed into the different forms of this universe itself. So between me and the micro particle, there is no difference. They are the same. So always consider that the person you meet is same as you. He has got the same soul as it you. That's why we say pranam. That's why we say om namo narayan. That means the narayan or the God into you. I blow upon. From the God into me. So this way, our scripture says, "Evam tu pandite jartva sarva bhut mayam harin." So only the intelligent people, only the wise people, accepts it that God is prevailing into all of us. So we have to worship each other. We have to love each other. We have to treat each other as one only. So on the same. Topic, Lord Krishna says. Into Gita, it has been mentioned. Yo mam pashati sarvatra sarvam cha mai pashati tasya ham na pranasyami sa cha me na pranasyati. So, who sees me into all, or sees all into me? So, I do not get disconnected with him. So, the concept of religion has been a single lined. Mentioned here, if you will find divinity into all, or you will find all into the divinity of God, that means making it one. So God will never leave you. Into the Ramayana, Ram Charit Manasa Tulsi Dasa, the great poetic saint, also says, "Jada Chetan Jaga Jiyo Jata Sakala Ram Amay Jani Mandau Sabke Pad Kamal Sada Jori Jukpani." So that's why into this vast land of ancient wisdom. All the poor, all the needy, all the animals, all the birds, all the living creatures, we advocate love, kindness. That's why the most of the non-vegetarians live at India. We advocate it. So when we talk about our religious festivals, what we do? We feed floor, ground floor to the ants. We put food for the birds. We give fodder to the cows and other animals, and we create big cattle fields. We also you will find so many places when you come at my ashrama or at my city, Ujjain. You won't have to pay for food because there are free food restaurants. You can say or the great religious places are there. They provide free food 24 hours for. Those who are hungry, so this is the actual expression of your soulfulness. So the non-living or the active ones, the living ones, we all get connected to each other. That's why we worship rivers. We treat rivers as the messengers of God. Why? Because that helps the existence. We worship the trees. You know, people tree, banyan tree. We Treat it as our deities. Why? Because, in the scientific terms, it gives the utmost oxygen that none of the other plant can give, and that nurtures the existence of human being. It creates, eradicates pollution. So, there are lot of things. Those are into the uh, scientific explanations have been included into the Sanatan Dharma. the science is much lagging behind the concepts of hindu sanatan dharma our moral values we have kept on to the top we have got ganga river some of the people asked me why ganga you worship you know ganga has got bacteriophages the lone river or 
Abhijamjam is there, some more rivers are there, but Ganga is the topmost river which has got the water that contains bacteriophages, bacteria eating bacteria. So it's the purest water form. So that's why that is a life power and we worship it like our mother only because mother cares for a kid or children more than anything else in this world. The second sign of Hindu lifestyle is sacrifice and yajna. Yajna itself is a sacrifice. So we say yajna mai sanskriti that means a civilization based on sacrifice is Hinduism. From life till death we have talked about the 16 sanskaras last lecture and we have got the ritual of yajna that is a fire ritual in which we put something, some food, some grains, some other uh, materials and what we say idam namama, idam namama means that is not for me God, that is for this nature. So it has been said into the scientific terminology that when we do yajna, that fire ritual, whatever properties, whatever uh, grains are being burnt into it, they give the most positive gases that purifies the air, this ecosystem, ecological system of this uh, planet can be maintained doing the yajna even in this little fire. You can say so much of power is there. Here, into Hinduism, we have got a habit of donation, and donation is the one of the top most sacred ritual. Every festival, every day, you will find we have got the different list of donations. And one thing you will amaze, you might have seen a lot of ministers, lot of chief ministers, lot of politicians, lot of kings bowing before a sannyasi like me, like us. Why? Because they know that we have sacrificed our life for the betterment of humanity. We are not into touch of any sort of greed. We are not doing anything for self. Whatever we do, whatever sannyasi does, that is for the betterment of humanity beyond caste, creed, color, nationality, languages, anything, any differences might be there. So here in Hinduism, there is a lot of respect for sannyasis. Here, even the kings, they just follow whatever the sannyasi says. And we have got a 12-year festival kum that was started by a king, Raja Harshwardhan only. And we go into that festival and do lot of religious practices. We Every day, take out a part of our food that we eat for the cows, for the crows, for the dogs. Any animal that comes to our residential colony, we have got the habit to feed them every day. And we, when we are talking about the Hindu lifestyle, we have to keep in mind that we need to think and rethink about our duties not on our rights. We don't have any rights. We have our duties to be performed. And this rights word has been from the Western philosophy, not from the Eastern wisdom or not from the Indian wisdom. It has been treated to the humanity to make them rebels that you have got such and such right. Food is your right. Cloth is your right. No. When you will sow the seeds, you will do your labor into the field, then only you will get the crop, the yield and then you can have your food. This is how this nature has been constituted and Sanatana Hindu scriptures mention the importance of duties, not the rights. And when you think about the right, you will just get selfish because you get possessiveness and this possessiveness, Hinduism never advocates never preaches for and that's why lot of things have been said and uh, when I met HWPL officials I said that we are conducting here duty revolution by the name of Kartavya Kranti so lot of things we talk about our duties we treat everything as a loan 
मातृ ऋण पित्र ऋण दैट मीन्स वी हैव टू पे टू वॉट्स अवर मदर वी हैव टू पे टू वॉट्स अवर फादर भूमि ऋण वी हैव टू पे टू वॉट्स अवर लैंड वेर वी आर रिसाइडिंग दैन वी कैन से प्रकृति ऋण वी हैव टू वी हैव गॉट अवर ड्यूटीज टू वॉट दिस नेचर सो देर इज नथिंग अबाउट राइट बट इट इज ऑल अबाउट योर ड्यूटीज दैट्स वाई वी यूज द वर्ड धर्मा एंड धर्मा इज नथिंग बट ड्यूटी यथा पुत्र धर्म दैट मीन्स अ सन हैज इट्स ओन धर्मा हिज ओन ड्यूटी टूवर्ड्स हिज फैमिली टूवर्ड्स हिज फादर मदर वाइफ हिज ओन रिलीजन हिज ओन पीपल सोसाइटी सो हियर वी हैव मैंशन डूज एंड डोंट्स सो इन हिंदुइजम दिस एथिकल टीचिंग इज ऑलवेज देर our society our nation only can get strength they when the constituents of this great nation your own nation won't have the responsibility they will have to show their responsible behavior that's why the governments of all nations what they feel follow the traffic rules follow the constitution follow the civil penal code and whatever laws or regulations are there so this is what dharma we have to follow them for the betterment of all it's a unanimous decision for the betterment of all that is what dharma is there so this has been very nicely explained into different scriptures of hinduism and today the importance of following this dharma is too much in the context we talk about cessation of war and handing of the ammunition production so hinduism these are the main things those we take into account then thankfulness that is gratitude and the feel of worshiping for us the human animal we talked the nature they all are the helping elements for us so we have to grateful to all of this so when we pray you know into hindu rituals worshiping rituals religious rituals what they do if i have to take the leave of mango tree i'll visit a day before to the mango tree pray the mango tree and say please bless me please help me i need your leaves your fruits so give me permission so this is what a mental exercise this is what we talk about when we pray so the feeling of gratitude the feeling of dutifulness is there into hinduism and that is same with the different forms of deities towards our parents our teacher and this is what the basic worshiping values of hinduism for husband and wife there is dharma is the basis and when we talk about the religious text you know our lord shri rama though he knew that his father had three wives the third one wanted a son to be the king so she ordered or requested her husband dashrata rama's father to give exile of 14 years to rama so that he'll be out of the kingdom and other person bharat could be made the king but there might be a sabotage into other religious scriptures we have seen uh, we have got history that they even kill their fathers they even kill their sons they even uh, had a, a lot of betrayals into the same family but ramayana the story of rama it has been mentioned that even on the wrong decision of his father rama his son never denied he bowed and said okay father i'll go 14 years and live there into forest so this is the obedience this is what hindu dharma teaches so the sanatan dharma hindu vedic philosophy it always preaches vasudev kutumbakam that means whole world is a family and when we talk about whole world to be a family we mean it 
because you have been nurtured, you have been taught since ages the same thing. That's why the ancestors of Hindu philosophy, Hindu dharma and it talked about universal brotherhood. Nowadays, there are religions, there are some of the orthodox religious people who talk about their own religious brotherhood, whereas Sanatan Hindu religion, it talks about universal brotherhood. That's why we say Loka Samasta Sukhino Bhavantu. That means whoever lives on this planet must be happy and healthy. So there must be a proper, uh, proper way of coordination, proper way of similarity, proper way of harmony into all. That's why it has been mentioned. Mitra Sevma Chakshuna Sarvani Bhutani Samikshantram Mitrasyaham Chakshusha Sarvani Bhutani Samikshe Mitrasya Chakshusha Samiksha Mahe And what we feel is that Mitrasya means friendliness. So into our eyes there should be friendliness. Into our thoughts there must be friendliness. Into our uh, listening, into our expressions. Everywhere, into our discussion there must be friendliness. There must not be any enmity. So world peace can be nurtured very nicely by following Sanatan Hindu Dharma. That's why our feeling is that Sarve Bhavantu Sukhina, Sarve Santu Niramaya, Sarve Bhadrani Pashyantu, Ma Kashit Dukha Bhak Bhavet. That means, may all be happy, may all see happiness, may none be suffering from any of the disease or pain and the universal brotherhood might prevail everywhere. And that is the Mul Mantra, that is the basic mantra, the basic principle of Hinduism. When we pray early morning, what we say? Dho Shanti Radha Riksham Shanti Prithivi Shanti Rapaha Shanti Rakha Daya Shanti Ramanaspataya Shanti Vishwa Devaha Shanti Brahma Shanti Sarva Shanti Shanti Reva Shanti Sama Shanti Rodhi. That means May there be peace in the universe. May there be peace on this earth. May there be peace uh, into the vegetations all around. May there be peace onto any part of the world. May there be peace as the creative forces. May there be peace into the peaceful world and everywhere may be peace. So this way we talk about world peace. So, at the end, I would like to say Sanatan Hindu religion is conduct, it's a behavior, it's a thought along with deed and it has been expressed into our lifestyle, that is what Hinduism is about. So, let us pledge together that we must not just treat ourselves to be a body, not just a mind, not just intellect, not just uh, mind, but we are above all soul that is traveling towards the God. We must leave the feeling of ego. We must get selfless. We should not restrict ourselves into a smaller greed foundations, but Along with dutifulness, we must serve the society, the nation and the humanity without having the greed to get returns. Let us live our life to improve the qualities of humanity. Let us enlighten our characters and take it to the topmost levels. And let us promote others, let us encourage others for satya, that is truth. Let us encourage others for prema, that is love. Let us encourage others for trust, that is vishwasa, towards shanti, that is towards peace. Treat that our soul is immortal. We may change our bodies. We will not die. Our body may die. But about this vitality of immortality, we must always advocate the things. Let us place the things, live a life full of happiness. We must trust God is one. The different religions, the different ways they are leading towards the single God. 
and that is only one that is prevailing into all of us into all the nations into all the countries into all the lands into all the caste into all the religions into all the colors there is no difference that is prevailing the divinity is prevailing into all of us that's why let us once again shout together with joy with pledge we are one